Hi, Dave Smith here, DJS Photography. This is another video in my ongoing series of uh, black and white workflow uh, videos. And this one is uh, a little kind of throwback. I've, I've actually been making and putting up videos uh, in sequence to take us through the, the whole workflow. Uh, but I thought you might be uh, interested in seeing this. This is uh, a new camera that I came across recently and decided to buy. Uh, and it's a pinhole camera. It's in the panoramic format, uh, 6x17. Uh, the panoramic format is one that I've uh, been uh, shooting in for quite some time and I've uh, been fortunate enough to be uh, awarded in uh, every year I've entered into the uh, Epson Panoramic Awards. Uh, so it is a, a format that I like. Uh, and I came across this uh, on the web uh, kind of by accident really and was so intrigued that I, uh, I decided to buy one. It's 165 euros and it shoots in the 6x17 format. But it's not quite as straightforward as that. So let me just take you through some of the features uh, and then I'll do a subsequent video to show the loading of the film because that's not really very straightforward. Uh, there is a video on the maker's website that shows the loading, uh, but uh, I think the more often we can see things in slightly different ways, the easier it is. And I've definitely made mistakes in loading this, so can't hurt to show, I think. Um, okay, so we'll have a look at the uh, outside of the thing first, and I think maybe the first thing to notice is two pinholes. And you've got a shutter here, shutter here. Uh, upper and lower pinhole and they uh, allow you to shoot your landscapes for example or indeed any image uh, to the rule of thirds so you can have more sky or more ground more land um, and I, I won't say why that's uh, necessary just for the moment uh, I will come back to that feature when we look inside a couple of spring clips on each end holding the two parts of the camera together and you'll see that in a moment I'll uh, I'll open that up. The two knurled uh, knobs on the top uh, allow you to turn the film. This is uh, a very, very basic camera, uh, everything manual, and you literally turn the film for yourself. You can see where you are in the film through this little red window at the back here, so you know, a real throwback uh, technology here. And they're quite solid, these, uh, these little things here. They're, I think they're knurled uh, aluminium. Uh, there's a bubble spirit level on the top because uh, in general you're going to want to get this thing leveled uh, on your tripod and more about that in a moment. The other thing to show, I'm not sure how well you see but there are a couple of uh, etched dashed lines in the end here. Okay, So there's one partly obscured by this thing here but goes in that direction and this one goes in that direction and that matches with the bottom pinhole here. On the other side, you've got a similar set of etched lines that match with the upper pinhole there. And that's literally how you frame your image. You, you squint along those lines so you can see what's going to be in the frame and, uh, and, and then adjust as, uh, accordingly. You have a similar set of lines on the top. These two here, etched along the top, and they show you the horizontal field of view if your camera's in that orientation. And that's uh, pretty enormous. That looks to me like it's, what, 140, 150 degrees. So pretty wide angle there uh, and, and really nice. So that's uh, kind of all there is to the outside. When I was shooting uh, using this in the Grand Place, I've taken this out about three times now. I've uh, done the Etang Dixel uh, just down the road from me. And I've been down into the Grand Place a couple of times. Uh, and I wanted to shoot the town hall vertically, the town, if you don't know the Grand Place, the town hall is this staggering uh, gothic architectural masterpiece. I think it's on our World Heritage, the whole Grand Place is World Heritage. So I had my camera vertical, just so I could get the spire in, and I opened my pinhole and it just dropped shutting in. So I had to hold this open and the exposures on this can be pretty lengthy. And if you listen to that, that positive click you hear is a, a magnet inside that tends to pull the shutter closed. It won't pull it closed if it's open like that, but you can get a nice positive action to it. 
Now, um, before we go delving inside, uh, these pinholes are F233 equivalent. And um, doing that kind of maths in your head can uh, can sometimes be a bit daunting, but the camera comes with a really handy credit card size reference chart that um, converts times from uh, your light meter. I use this uh, Minolta incident meter when I'm uh, out and about with this. Set it to F16 and read the time, and then do the conversion for the time from F16 to F233 off the card that comes with this. Now that card doesn't include uh, reciprocity. Um, so you have to look that up for your film. Uh, I was using uh, Tmax, and the reciprocity is, uh, uh, is roughly um, one stop for uh, 10 plus seconds, two stops for 100 plus seconds. Uh, I may have that slightly wrong. And maybe uh, maybe two stops for 100 seconds and uh, one, one stop for uh, 10 seconds. But you can look it up, it's pretty well known. Uh, for uh, for Tmax, I guess the best film for this is going to be Fuji Acros, where which has uh, almost no reciprocity failure at all. Uh, and if you don't know what reciprocity is, I'll do a, uh, an explanation video on that uh, another time. Um, so that's the routine. That's uh, that's what I do. Let's have a look inside. So it's, it's all held together by four pretty beefy uh, spring clips here. Uh, so I've just released those and then the uh, top and bottom literally just separate apart like so. And you can see there's a take up spool in there. I'll just take that out. That's the inside of the back then. You've got these keyed brass uh, lugs here that locate into the top of the spools. And when you're putting this back on, uh, they won't necessarily properly uh, located so you just want to turn those slightly to slot that back on but you can see that's nicely made that's uh, high impact polystyrene apparently and nice big hefty brackets holding front and back together and that does feel like a pretty solid uh, piece of equipment now let's see why we need two pinholes so if you will see inside there you can see right at the back here where my finger is is a pillar and the film goes around the back of that from where my fingernail is goes in there and comes out at the other side and then follows this curved track all the way around and goes in let me put my finger in again in on that side and out where my fingernail is here onto the take up spot if I show you on the top it's following a curved path like so now because the path of the film is curved, if you have uh, a tilt on your camera, it's going to cause things like your horizon to be curved. It's not always a bad thing. I've seen images of uh, bridges, for example, where the natural curve of the bridge is just accentuated by a slight tilt in the camera, and that's a nice effect. But if you're shooting landscapes or seascapes, you may well not want your horizon to be uh, tilted. So you would put this uh, flat you make sure it was level. And then, uh, if there was only one pinhole, your horizon would be dead center. So because the maker has put two pinholes in, you can uh, adjust your rule of thirds accordingly. So quite a clever idea. Um, but why the curved path? Because that really does add significant complexity. Well, it's got a curved path because then what happens is that the light rays coming in, just look at, in from the pinhole are all travelling uh, an equal distance to get to the film and what that means is you don't get any fall off towards the edges really clever so this is a nicely thought out uh, camera it feels solidly made, it's well built uh, and uh, nicely constructed so if you're interested the uh, makers website is on my blog, so djsp.eu uh, if you go to the blog I've put up a little uh, appraisal of this camera on there uh, if you're really desperate and you can't wait to get to the blog to get the link um, the name of the camera, if you google it, you'll get there is really so subtle because clearly it's not you can read big black brick 
the maker does make a 5 by 4 version and I think there are other um, medium format versions possibly as well, I, I can't quite remember now, I was just interested in this panoramic format. Uh, but well worth a look at, you know, only 165 euros, I've had great fun with it, been out three times and I will continue to use it, it will become a sort of standard um, shooting device when I'm out taking landscapes if I see something that's, uh, that's appropriate uh, to its use. Of course, only takes four up to a medium format roll, so you, know, you, don't, have, you don't have to have very many ideas before you've used up for three or four rolls of film. Uh, so as I say, I will do uh, another video to show the loading. Right? Even though the maker has one on his website, uh, I think it can't hurt to see it uh, in different ways. Um, so let me just put that back together and put the take up spool in there. And then this literally slots on uh, just as we took it off. And that has that has slotted in quite nicely. I didn't need to readjust that. I'm just going to pop those on. So I hope that that's of some interest. And if anybody does end up getting one of these cameras, uh, do, do let me know and let me see some images. I'm going to put a couple of images from it on the end of the uh, video, so you can see. If you go to my blog, you'll see the write-up and you'll see uh, some images there as well. Uh, as I said, I haven't taken very many with it. I've been out uh, three times. I might have shot uh, four rolls of film with it, something, something like that. Um, but I'm, I'm liking it. Um, so let me know. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope that's been of some use. Bye for now.